Welcome to the return of New York State Music in Motion. I'm your host, rocker Frank Palangi, here as we have a sit down chat with artists from all over New York State. This season, we are sponsored by the Help and Friendly Salve, an all natural herbal extract. You can check them out at thehelpandfriendlysalve.com. Hey, everybody, what's going on? Welcome, Circe, in the building. We have New York State Music Season 2, Music in Motion. What's going on, guys? Whoa. How you doing How out are there? You? We it's got great Melanie to see you. and Rich in the building. Richie Rich. <laughs> How are you? Long time no see. Yeah, it's been um, it's been a couple of years since we played a show, right? I yeah. think so. I think so. But we yeah. keep up on you, and you're doing great. You look great. You sound great. So. Thanks. I I try, <laughs> I try my best. I really do. <laughs> but uh, but you guys, you do music full time as well, right? Yes. We, do. we do. Yes. I mean, I've known that for a long time. <laughs> what's what's some of the challenges with doing it yourself you know uh, music full-time all that jazz uh well the, you know the last year has been a very unique challenge i mean I, we thought we had it rough in the the 10 plus years we were just kind of trying to make a living touring um but you know obviously when you can't really do that we we've kind of have pivoted into doing these crazy online streaming shows that are part music part <laughs> comedy well we we think it's comedy but we don't know if anyone else thinks we, it's comedy. we hope everyone else thinks it's comedy because you know you lose you lose a little bit of your um objectivity when it's just the two of you in a live stream and you don't really uh you don't hear the response of the crowd but the comments keep coming up and the people keep joining us and we've been doing them every saturday night at 8 8 p.m eastern and um it's been keeping us afloat financially uh, and is that on Facebook? Yeah, yeah. Is that on Facebook? Yeah. Uh, we do them on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, okay. Yeah, and they're free for everybody to watch. So if people can't do it, you know, we're not the only ones that can't play and we're not the only ones out of work. Uh, yeah. You can watch for free, but people have been very generous with tips and stuff. So um, nice. So that's been well. But normally, to answer your question, normally the challenges of being a uh, full-time musician are that, uh, especially when you're playing originals, um, are that, uh, you know, you have to hustle all the time, you know, yeah. there's just always, always hustle. Um, uh, you, you guys are on the road a lot too. Yeah. Lot. Yeah. In the bio think, 250 shows a year. Yeah. yeah. And I think in 2019, maybe three months were at home and the rest was on the road. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I know you had some health issues and stuff going, and yes. I'm glad you got through all that. Are you hundred? Are you good? Are you hundred percent now? I am good. Yeah, I so I beat cancer for the second time, uh, and uh, yeah, I, I go back for regular checkups. I just had a checkup with my uh, oncologist a couple weeks ago, and everything was good. So uh, I'm doing good. well. Yeah, thank you. Good. How about you, Rich? What's going on in your camp? I haven't Absolutely. really talked to you a lot, to be honest. <laughs> it's always Melanie. <laughs> yes. Uh, absolutely nothing is going on with me other than, I mean, the same things that's going on with Mel. I mean, we've been pretty uh, uh, strict with our isolation through uh, through COVID uh, because of Melanie's cancer. Uh, you know, yes. Just in general. She's, yeah, yeah. She was uh, a little bit higher risk. And, you know, there really, there's no place really to go. You know, our whole lives revolved around just touring and being in different spots. So now you're really stuck in a room my, together. My video creative side with doing uh, just like, you know, some kooky tech stuff with the shows and the video editing. It's pre recorded packets and stuff like that. So he's being modest. We had a, we had a Star Wars themed show because Rich is a huge Star Wars fan. And that <laughs> there you go. Star Trek scene themed show. I'm a huge Star Trek fan. So we had special effects that he created and he had so uh, Star Wars and Star Trek and... get along in your place. Yeah, then. It's, it's emerging of worlds, Frank. It can happen. It can. <laughs> Divisiveness. Yeah. We can all come together as a people. There's right? been fan films with both worlds come together and it, it yes. is possible. It is. It's possible. Believe it or not. It's rare, but it's possible. Love it will find rare. a way, as they say. <laughs> yep. Yep. He's this... been, you've been exploring your, um, in during quarantine, you've been exploring your cooking. I've been doing a lot more cooking, which is normally stuff that we can't usually do on the road. I like yeah. that. Yeah. What, what kind of diet do you usually have on the road, 
versus home? Uh, we when we're on the road, we make something called bathroom sink salad. It uh, sounds better. It tastes better than it sounds. Yes. So often when we're in the hotels, you know, we try to eat cheaply and healthy. Uh, so we will go to a supermarket and we'll just bring a lot of veggies and stuff back to the room. And there's something really weird about cleaning vegetables in a hotel bathroom sink. <laughs> oh. uh, we don't actually lay them. I just, just as a disclaimer, uh, we don't actually lay the vegetables. Well, you know, the bathroom. Yeah. Just, I'd hope you put them in a pot just, just, or something. Oh, something sink, you bring. Though, yeah. So. yeah. 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 And, so, and I mean, that's, that's a lot of it. They always have fruit too it's a good thing if, if there's breakfast the so yeah. but everything yeah. else it's it's pretty bad you know i, I do yeah. eat yeah. the um you know the full eggs that you just grab yeah you know because yeah. they're the only real ones so i just right, grab right. a couple of those yeah. but <laughs> yeah yeah Sometimes when i was places will feed you uh but it's never anything that you can eat on a regular basis without you know getting yeah. yourself really sick or gaining 100 pounds because it's never healthy yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. the venues sometimes they give you food too, and you probably can yeah. choose like, well, I'll have the chicken salad, please. You know what yes. I mean? And I'll have, uh, I really want the chicken wings, but you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. It's almost always yeah. pizza. It's, it seems like it's always yeah. pizza, which it's, I mean, I love, it's good but for I can't you. eat pizza seven days a week. Large calories, <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> I'm a vegetarian, so often they'll say, you know, we'll, we'll feed you, and the only thing on the menu that I can eat is the French fries. Or yeah. So, or salad. So, yeah, we try salad to plan no ahead. Chicken. Yeah. Do you yeah, like buffalo actually, sauce some... though? What's that? Do you like buffalo sauce though on stuff? Uh yeah. Yeah, buffalo sauce will be good on french fries, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's good. Um we had a fan that gifted us a little refrigerator that plugs into the power port in the van. So that's really that's cool. It really revolutionized our touring and so yeah, we can bring a lot of like fresh fruits and veggies and put it in there. So yeah. Well, my next yeah. question, the van Mm. It's it's mm. been through since almost the beginning from, with you guys. Uh, we're on we've had two. fourth van. Oh, you've had four. Fourth okay. van. van. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the first we usually get rid of them when they have about two hundred and thirty, two hundred and fifty thousand miles, uh, which wow. is what we got out of the first three. This one is relatively new. I think we're only at about ninety thousand on this. But literally in the last year, we've probably driven it a hundred miles. Yeah, <laughs> we've driven it much. Yeah. Uh, in the last year. So we should get a few more years out of, out of this one. But yeah, fourth fourth van, believe it or not. And we always have a contest for the fans to name the van. And so this particular van is named Axel. Okay. Uh, I think the full name is Axel Rhodes. <laughs> <laughs> what was the other uh, one? Mixie so or something I read? Was it Mixie? Uh, we had, well, my mom's dog is Moxie. Maybe Moxie. you saw that. Okay, Maybe okay. You saw photos of my mom's dog, but we had a the um, previous fan was Miles. Miles. Yeah. Miles. These are all, you know, picked by we our had fans. A Miles. Yeah. And we had a um, Betty White Ford. Betty White. <laughs> we had Goldie was the first one. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. Nice. Now, what do you guys do when you travel? Do you bring like portable DVD players and watch movies too? Like one of you, you know, while you're taking turns driving or you just snoring the whole time? Or <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, a lot of the times I do like 99% of the driving. Melanie is normally booking shows, doing social media stuff, you know, doing all the kind of behind the scenes stuff to, to keep us going. Uh, you know, every so often we tune out. I don't want to say that we are uh, watching uh, things and driving, but, uh, you know, maybe a little Netflix on the phone, like stand-up comedy uh, yeah, in the background. To. Things yeah. that don't require a lot of visuals. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Like we watch The Daily Action Show. Action films. Trevor Noah and yes. stuff like that. <laughs> Catch up on the headlines with Trevor Noah. I'm not sure that that's actually factual, but it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, tonight Show or something put on, you just yes. listen to it. Yes. 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 Those are cool. Yeah. Um, you do have some fan questions I read in. I actually wrote some of these down. Um, kind of, we're on the topic now. So Todd Campbell, uh, he said, uh, when are you going to be touring again? And um, I get this question a lot too. When are you going to play out again, Frank? Uh, same boat as yeah. you guys. I'm just going to yeah. say that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, well, I was able to get the vaccine uh, because of my cancer status. Oh. <clears throat> Yeah. Me. Sorry. About that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's dog walk time. through. Um, Alarm. <laughs> uh, 
I was able to get the vaccine uh, and, and we're waiting for Rich to be eligible. We hope he is soon. Um, so once that happens, we will safely be able to go out in the world. So we're hoping like this summer that we'll be able to do a lot of safe shows. This is actually exciting news you can share with the viewers. Okay. Is it Ricky? So Rich is Rickenbacker guitar. Oh, yeah. He plays for every gig and it's beat up and it's kind of become known for being so messed up looking because it's got paint missing. Been through everything. He had to have fret work done and he shipped it off to uh, a place in North Carolina. Um, it's North Carolina Guitar Works, right? It's the yeah. full name of Nick's yeah. place. Yeah. Uh, North Carolina Guitar Works in uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, um, owned by a friend of ours, and um, he fixed it and did all the prep work. Are you not going to show us? Uh, it's all boxed up. I don't want to. Oh. Uh, <laughs> okay. Show us. It'll take me like 15 minutes. Okay. To get it off. Okay. <laughs> but it's been gone yeah. for how many weeks? It's been gone two weeks. He got it a really quick turnaround, but uh, I had to actually sign for it, so that's why I had to get that signed. Oh that's yeah, fine. yeah, FedEx. It's a, it's a big, uh, it's a big thing now. It it's is. a big thing that it's back. How do you feel? Uh, I'm, I'm very relieved that it's back. It <laughs> he's been, really, he's been very nervous. Very nervous to ship that. You know? So I, yeah, I would be too. I mean, um, anything like that, especially you've had it for so long, yes. and it's like. Yeah. Mm, but it's right. Sometimes, you know, this stuff, you have to send it out somewhere that uh, I don't want to say this area doesn't know as much, but you right. know what oh, I yeah, mean? Yeah. Specialist. Yes. You know what I mean? We wanted to go to Parkway because they usually do a great job. On yeah. These yeah. Cars, but the Rickenbacker, you'll have to explain. Has Specific, a... right? Oh, uh, well, I, I just talked to Nick. Nick uh, uh, will relaminate. The Rickenbacker necks are relaminated, and a lot of uh, luthiers don't want to do the relaminating, but he's yeah. done a bunch yeah. of them. So I, you know, I want, I want it to be good. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't blame you there. <laughs> what other, what other gear do you have? I know you play. You got a mound of pedals, and you have uh, what kind of amps do you use too? Uh, I use mostly uh, Fender amps. Um, I have uh, actually I have three Fender amps. I play with the Hot Rod Deluxe uh, often, and then I have kind of like a small boutique, just like a little ten watt uh, Fender uh, that mm -hmm. I use to record. Um, I'll use a small lamp to record like that. I do. Like, uh, I know I learned that from somebody, I don't know, like, I think when we were recording revolution, you know what I mean? Just a uh, small little amp, you know, maybe juiced up, uh, you know, tube wise. Um, and yeah. then just crank the, uh, the, the preamp, you know, with a nice tube preamp and get a nice big, huge sound. Um, I think when we recorded, uh, cannonball which was a song off coming into frame i was using a five watt uh fender champ that the producer had and i mean no joke it's it's this it's this big it's yeah really tiny. they have eight mics I on mean, it yeah they put just like a you know like a two thousand dollar ribbon mic on it and cranked it to the uh yeah. Yeah. And it was like huge sounding i you know couldn't believe how big it, it sounded just from that tiny little amp so I picked up the, it's a Shure 131 uh, ribbon mic, and I've oh, never yeah. used ribbon mics. I've used yeah. what everybody says, no, I'll just standardly use all this and stuff, right? I hooked yeah. up the ribbon microphone, I go, damn, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is where it's at. That's where they get that sound. Yeah. Yeah. I'm always nervous with touching the ribbon mics because I, I, they're supposedly fragile. <laughs> some of them, yeah. This one's yeah. not. You could drop okay. it and you'd be all right. But yeah, okay. some of them, if you turn the amp up too loud, it'll blow the inside. Right. Yeah. So it's a, uh, it's tricky, tricky situation, yeah. <laughs> but uh, Melanie, you know, for everybody who doesn't know, she, she sings and she plays drums at the same time. I do. And so, the bass, she's playing the bass too at, on her, on her drum kit often at the same time. I well, thought I so. I thought so. Mini oh, controller. Yep. Yeah. I have a Roland uh, SPDS X, which has uh, nine uh, possible MIDI pads on it. So you can have nine different notes on it at a time. And we set it up like you would play piano. So on piano, you press a key, you get a note. You have to press a different key to get a different note. Yep. So you have to press a different pad in order to get a note. So it's not like um, playing along with a pre-recorded loop where yeah. you have to follow the loop. It's more like, you know, it's, be, it's being played live like different notes. So it's a very simple 
bass part typically um we are not a funk band uh so it's yeah a no very rock pop and, and uh, indie yeah, that's so, why i would describe so, it yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 now when you hit the pad right do you have to program how long it lasts or do you do that with like a foot pedal uh, well, it's, it's you can program it different ways. We program it to shut it off when you hit the next note. Yeah. So it's kind of like it's like kind of oh, like okay. playing the piano without a sustain pedal. Um, although there's no there's no poly aspect to it. Uh, although you yeah. can program it that way. But normally in bass, you want just the one note at a time. So yeah, that uh, sound. And it's connected to a, a unit uh, MIDI into it uh, that I control with my feet, uh, so that we both have access to the same bass notes for every song so like if melanie hits a, a note it just keeps ringing out until i shut it off or she hits uh, okay note. so, so yeah. if she's doing a roll you can hit the other bass note while the roll's right. happening and then she comes yes. in hits yeah. this and then the bass boom yes. that's cool yeah correct we have to work all that out uh, in rehearsal and sometimes you know because we'll write a song the way we want it to be written yeah. Then we have to arrange it to play it live. How does it and work? And I'm like, yeah. I can't do this drum fill here if I'm going to be playing this bass note. So he's got to jump in and play the bass note there. And then he's like, well, I can't play the guitar riff. So I'm like, okay, well, I'll, I'll jump <laughs> in. So walk. sometimes we're actually sharing a phrase on the bass. Um, yeah. You know, which Double -note developed it. over the years of us doing it. So, yeah. Nice. Yeah. That's yeah. I've never heard that in my whole life. Anybody yeah, play it's like pretty that. unique. I think it's pretty unique. Yeah. Yeah. Because. I just thought of that and I go, you know what? I can't, I know she was hitting pads and stuff. I go, I can't remember if he like plays it with his feet, but I see him doing it, but she's doing this. Yeah. yeah. So, oh yeah. I mean, it's a two man, all man band. Correct. You know what I mean? <laughs> Correct. That's what I like. That's yeah. If like. one of us doesn't show up, it's going to be a really bad gig. I actually had a recurring nightmare about that once. And I show up in the nightmare. I show up at the gig and I'm setting everything up and I just keep waiting for Rich to show up and he doesn't show up and I have to play drums and bass without him. And so I just start in the, in the dream, I just start playing the drums and singing and I'm playing like, you know, half of the bass parts and it sounds <laughs> weird. And the crowd in the nightmare, the crowd is just like looking at me, like completely confused what are you doing? by me. And then I wake up and I'm like, Oh my God, thank God. I have to play. Yeah. Well, that's kind of like, uh, there's a question from John Roos. Uh, what's the worst show that you've had in, in the best show? Andre Packen? I can't say his last okay. name. Okay. Andre Spachon. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Those are regular uh, watchers of our, uh, of our lives. Okay. What's going on guys? Um, <clears throat> worst show. I mean, we've had some really bad shows and some we probably can't talk about for fear of being. Can you, can I drop an F-bomb in this? No. <laughs> <laughs> you could just say F. Okay. F um, we played a show yeah. in, uh, it was in Florida somewhere. It was in Tallahassee. Oh, uh, Gainesville. Oh, you can tell my Gainesville story? In Gainesville, Florida. Okay. Uh, we uh, ended up on this bill. With there golf carts involved? And Let me just say, I don't know if this is the worst show we've ever played, well, but it was a crazy show. It was a, it was it was a crazy, crazy show. show. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah. And the promoter was really excited. Uh, he, you know, I checked this out. It was our first time at this venue in Gainesville. And he said, oh, you know, I'll put a whole show together around you guys. I'll put you in the middle. Uh, he goes, it'll be wonderful. We'll have a whole great night. And he had listened to our yeah. Cannonball video. Yeah. So he knew, mm -hmm. assumably, what we sounded like. So we showed up and there was us and four other death metal bands. Yeah. Like I'm talking, <laughs> you know, yeah. <laughs> like, you know, like the Cookie Monster vocals, and that was the other female singer that was yeah. that was on the bill. And that's fine. I mean, like you know, I, yeah. obviously all kinds of music. It's all great, but it didn't There's really variety match shows. Really, yeah, yes, yeah, so it didn't really match yeah. with with our our uh, we were, what we were, we were nervous. Band. We were nervous for sure. So the first two <laughs> the first two bands played, and Melanie and I were like, you know what? Let's just go and do our thing. We'll maybe put some of the more aggressive songs on the set list. So when you're thinking of putting aggressive songs in the set list, obviously you're going to start with a song with the flute because Melanie also plays some flute. <laughs> she does, so, yes. We have a song called Revolution. It's kind of like, you know, it's riffy, you know, distorted guitar. Like kind of rock, rock yeah. rocking. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we so we play that and then the song <laughs> ends and the song ends kind of abruptly and there was a pause at the end that seemed to go on for hours, but probably only a few seconds. And then the silence was broken by a gentleman in the back who just yelled at the top of his lungs, 
play some more effing flute. <laughs> was the actual word. Yeah. Uh, and then everybody laughed and everyone cheered. And then by the end of our set, people were moshing to us, which I thought was awesome because that's literally they never happened before. That's cool. So, that's not uh, that bad of a, a show, but that's a no, nervous, it wasn't the worst nervous show. But it yeah. was a crazy. Scene. It started out as being maybe one of the worst. And then at the end, it, it was actually a really awesome memory. Could have been, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I think I was thrown into something like that when I was younger too, and it was really yeah. weird. But it was more of um, bluegrass and that kind of oh, stuff. Yeah. And I'm like, what am I yeah. doing here? Right? Yeah, you, you <laughs> yeah. do not belong Ooh. on a bluegrass yeah. bill any more than we belong in a death metal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it was in the yeah. middle of the country. You know, it was um, the countryside, so it's you know you got corn growing next to you. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> which is fine. I mean. But I didn't. Of course, I didn't, your music I didn't know. can totally exist in that market. But yeah. Well, I didn't know any Johnny Cash then. I know you guys cover some stuff. What about um, cover songs? What do you like to cover? Um, what? it's always a little bit different. Uh, actually, one cool thing in the pandemic has been since we don't really have to worry about crowd reaction, we've kind of done a bunch of covers that we normally would never do. We added in a few. Um, we did like uh, Lady Stardust by David Bowie, which is my all-time favorite songs. I don't know how well that would necessarily go over over live. We've been doing a Nina Simone song, uh, Feeling Good. Yep. Um, somebody to Love, Queen. Yeah, Somebody to Love, uh, We did like a stripped down version of that because obviously yeah. we can't do yeah. a big version of that. We would yeah. need Can many anyone? more hands and feet. Can anyone do a big version? Um, and then... Um, <laughs> But what and one of my one of my uh, favorites to do, which I didn't know that I actually liked this song, was that Stevie Nicks one that you wanted oh. to do. Oh. Rich wanted to do "Stand Back" by Stevie Nicks, and I was oh, like, okay. I don't I never really paid attention to this song, but it's super fun to play. Like on the drums, it's very high energy, and then the vocals are very high energy, so it's yep. pretty fun. So those are some fun ones that we cover. Oh. We did that Coldplay song too. That was kind of moody, mm -hmm. "Fix You" and um, Coldplay. Yeah, yeah. I don't know that yeah. we would ever do "Fix You" in a bar. Yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah. it was really and that's interesting fun. too. Some yeah. songs you necessarily wouldn't do in certain situations than others. Oh, yeah. You know, it's uh, correct. Yeah. yeah. Say you're playing um, a festival, you can throw in yeah. actually more time to kill than kind of song next song let's get to the next song that sort of thing yeah right it's it's kind of the opposite you think at a like a bar gig or something that you'd be able to throw in that fill time but yeah. then you might get something thrown at you yeah <laughs> <laughs> so it's like you know what i mean I we've know. all been there yes. yeah now how many yeah. albums do you have now like seven yeah that's we probably should know off the top of our head i think you had five time. cds when i was last gig like it's seven, right? Goner. Okay, so we're not going to count that. Okay, uh, seven. Like, we have, we yeah. released a couple of EPs, a couple of live things, so somewhere around eight. seven, seven full, <laughs> seven albums. So you're yeah. right, seven is correct. Um, and then a couple of EPs. Yeah, yeah, a couple singles here and there. And yeah. what you sent me is a new EP. Is it released yet, or or no? It just really, it was just released. Just released. Yes, and okay. we uh, released it in the in during the pandemic. We wrote the song "Astronauts." during the pandemic and the other song hey disaster was one that we had written a long time ago and we never released it mm -hmm. and we started just kind of like remembering it and so we played it acoustic during one of our live streams and the fans went crazy and they were like why is this song not released and why can't i not get this song it kind and of fits so we in just too. sort of put it on as like a b-side to astronauts and released it during the pandemic so yes those are both um, nice. Really released. Well, it, I like like a drum. I listened to that one, and I was like, "Did you record that one with the ten watt amp?" Uh, yes. Yeah. Because I do. I love the guitar tone in it. It's crazy, right? Yeah. That was the beast too. Yeah. That yeah. was the beast that you used. I, I think. Did, I did use that. Yeah. We have uh, some fans in Santa Fe, New Mexico, who, when they found out Melanie and I uh, got married for our first anniversary, they gave us uh, their old guitar. They had a uh, oh, Gretsch nice. BST from uh, the late 70s. Uh, so it was really more of a gift for me. Uh, but that thing is screamer. That thing has the coolest tones on it. I think you played uh, that on like, the drum. Do you only use yeah, that for recording? Is, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. part of that really great guitar tone on that. Yeah. That yeah. from Ben. So shout out to George and Sherry Sanford. <laughs> yeah. And their chicken. 
Uh, <laughs> so, but studio wise, where do you record everything? Where do we record? Yeah. Uh, it's, you know, I feel like we haven't done this, the same thing twice. Yeah. Uh, you know, the last bunch of albums, uh, well, Revolution, we did in Ithaca in a place called Pyramid Sound with Alex Perialis. Yeah. Uh, Coming into Frame, we recorded in a few different spots with the two producers we've been working with, uh, uh, Sean Slade and Paul Coldery. Um, what, like the, new e the new EP? Say again? The new EP? Uh, where'd you uh, record the, that? Well, the like, a, like a Drum we did at what used to be Cotton Hill in Albany. Um, oh, with okay. Paul with Paul Coldery, he, he came there. Yeah. And then Astronauts and Hades Astro, I think we just released, we actually tracked ourselves in the basement. Yeah. And Paul uh, produced it virtually. So we went back mm. and forth with each other like, I don't, oh no, we like, just kept sending each other files. Yeah. So it took a really long time that way because we couldn't all be in the same room, but it was it was a yeah. good way to be safe. But we would send him, we would say, okay, um, you know, I did this many, I did the I played the drums like three times. And I said, but I really love the first take. I just really love the first take, but you tell me what you think. Yeah. And he, you know, we would send him all the files. And then he was like, Yeah, the first take's the one. It's the one. We gotta go with that. So we were like, okay. So then we would move on and we would do the, <laughs> yep. you know, but normally if he was just in the same room, he would just say, that's it, move on, let's do the bass, you know? Yeah, would, it'd be a little like, quicker. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So it was a but. little bit of a longer process, but it came out. <clears throat> we really loved how it came out and we still like to work with him, yeah. which was great because it's good for us to have a buffer in the studio. That's why I think <laughs> people out there, they think records come together pretty fast, even EPs <laughs> or one song, let's say. I mean, yeah, yeah. I record one song. I took four days in a studio in Virginia yeah. and oh, yeah. Some, yeah. sometimes you can do it in a day. You know, it just depends yeah. on where yeah. and how yeah. much you want to work on it, that kind of thing. Well, so, the like a drum record, I think we recorded the whole record in four days or five days, something like that, days, uh, because we were in the studio with Paul and it was in the yeah. studio that used yeah. to be Cotton Hill, but it was at the time Magic, Magic League Studios. Uh, and they just had knock them out left and right. Yeah, they had just great equipment and Paul was there and Paul's really great at being decisive and we trust him. And so he just kind of can say, you don't need, you don't need to do that anymore. Move on. Let's do this. Let's, you know, let's do this part. You know, where yeah. there's two of us, I feel like when you have to judge your own performance, it takes longer because you never feel that it's good enough. But if someone yeah. else says to yeah. you, we got it, move on. It goes much quicker. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I know what you mean. I yeah. redo my guitars like five times before yeah. I end up saying, I think that's it. <laughs> yeah. I think. Yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. It's a lot. It helps with somebody well. else. It's good with someone else there to sort of yeah. just, who you trust, you know, to it say, is. no, that's it. Let's move on to the next thing. So it'll be my, my alter ego then. <laughs> <laughs> Left and right, battling against myself. So yeah. we got another question. Greg Green here. This is a cool one. What three songs of yours? kind of represent your band, your sound? Uh, I would say for me, mm -hmm. Revolution would be one mm -hmm. because I feel like it was the first time you and I kind of took the reins with our, our band and our songwriting. Yeah. And we just said, we don't really care about the music business and labels and all that crap. We just want to make music that we love and that's it. And so that one for me. Mm -hmm. And then I would say our song Brave and Kind, mm -hmm. um, because it's a song that is the song that we wrote the first time that I had cancer. And it was one of those songs, you know, sometimes you toil over a song and then sometimes it just pours out of you yeah. from someplace. Yeah, yeah. And that was one of those songs that just poured out. And um, it's the song that has inspired the most Cersei tattoos. So I know that the lyrics have oh, really? resonated with our fans. Um, so that's kind of cool. And then I think the third one for me would be Like a Drum, because that's the one that I wrote I was gonna the say second that. time. I go, it's gotta. Um, the second time I had cancer and it's like, it's kind of a song that was a little bit inspired by some of the notes we got from our fans saying like, you've got this, you can beat this. And, um, it's just full of life and, and energy, which I feel like is a celebration that we always have with our fans. So I would say for me, it's those three. I don't know about you. Interesting. 
You don't have to agree. <laughs> I'll take that. Uh, no, I, I, I mostly agree. I, I, uh, I would say it's like if you were trying to define what the, the sound of the band is, okay. I feel like we write three different kinds of songs. Okay. We have like kind of like just poppy stuff, mm -hmm. kind of uh, ballads that generally will get loud at some point. Uh, mm -hmm. I guess a power like ballad. And then kind of like the blues rock and thing. And, and I would say Revolution for me as well kind of defines that that uh, blues rock kind of thing. Uh, the the power ballad, Brave and Kind as well. And I would say for astronauts, that poppy yeah. thing, that's kind of like, yeah. you know, where it's it's not really rocking. It's not a ballad. It's just kind of like, you know, a quirky little little pop song. I feel like when we write songs, they normally fall into one of those three categories. Yeah, I would agree us, with that, you know? yeah. 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 So you came at it from the music point of view and I came at it from the lyrics point of view. <laughs> there so you go. Just, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'd expect <clears throat> that. I'd expect that. Yeah. So my question is, um, so if you had someone, it could be anybody famous, somebody, you know, um, to play with you live, who would the third member of Circe be? Oh. I mean, obviously Frank Palangi, right? <laughs> <laughs> It'd be that a little, be little heavier. I, you know what though? I would play the bass for you guys. I would definitely if would ever need a bass. <laughs> we guy. should, we should legitimately do I that. I would do sometime. that. Uh, I, I mean, I know my answer immediately. Uh, it's probably the same as you. Probably. Let's see. One, two, three. Paul oh McCartney. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So me on bass versus well Pump and Cartney, man. I don't know. He could school me. <laughs> he, could, he could play whatever he wanted. He could just stand yeah. there and play the cowbell. He could just if go. Thank you, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Or well, you know what though? You get him, your ticket sales would be like five hundred bucks a piece or more. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Price you right out of the market. <laughs> Yeah, what do you think of that as far as so let's talk about, you know, pre-COVID with ticket prices and stuff like that. You, uh, there's some I call them cover gigs where, you know, people come in and you play and you get paid by the venue or there's gigs that you sell tickets. Are you a fan of one versus the other and then also on the level of um say you opened up for somebody, that sort mm -hmm. of thing. What's your experience with that? Uh for us, I feel like uh, it's always good when you can play a ticketed event because then you know specifically people are there to see you. Mm -hmm. uh, for us, generally, I, I feel like that allows you to be more musical yes. and artistic, yes. and you can just be more free. But yeah. in a in a new market, like for us, you know, and as for most indie bands, there's some markets where we can go and play a ticketed event and know it's going to be successful, and there's some markets that we just don't have a strong enough foothold to do that. So like, you know, when you're playing a ticketed event, you sometimes, you know, uh, rule out the possibility that just passerbys are going to come and you're going to get some new fans. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so like when we play, like in markets that are new or newish to us, we try to do uh, just, you know, a thing where we're getting paid from the venue or being on a bill with a band, a ticketed event that actually has a good crowd. Yeah. Sometimes you don't really know. Sometimes mm -hmm. you're told they do, and sometimes they, you know. It's, yeah. It's yeah. A, it's a crapshoot. Well, and sometimes um, they do, but they just have a bad night. So yeah. the, the cover I mean, stuff is a little yeah. bit of a gateway for new market stuff. Yes. You do a little bit more yes. of that. You come back, maybe you wean off of that a little bit or whatever. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's yeah. cool. That's a good way. Of thinking. It's funny how different it is in every market, though. It's you know, it, it, you know, it's there's no rhyme or reason to it. It's just like some markets we instantly do really, really well. And in some, it like, it takes, it feels like years, you know, to, oh, okay. to, to, to build up steam. And, um, do you ever feel and like sometimes you... it just has to do with the, with the, with, you know, what venues there are in certain cities and, and certain markets. Some, some places just have venues that people like to go to, you mm -hmm. know, and some cities don't, you know? Yep. Like so. the first one that comes to mind to me is the evening news in Charlotte, North yeah. Carolina. And we play there, uh, and they have always have ticketed events and we knock on put seem to do okay with that. And we still seem to get new fans out of it. Yeah. 
even though it's a ticketed event because people just know that that place always has good music and so they yeah. just go yep. there they and just check go. out and they will pay a ticket to see someone they don't know the place to be on a they friday know night that it's going to be good right yeah yeah so uh but there are not a lot of places like that no. yeah you know? especially so, now yeah. but um yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. That's great. What do you, so what do you, what do you think is going to happen next? Well, I'll just ask that. In the world or for Cersei? <laughs> uh, who? I mean, it's such a heavy weighted question because you have, yeah. what are the shape the venues in? Um, are the yeah. people actually going to risk to go out? Are, um, yeah. Yeah. It's like a you good said, question. you know, those ticketed events, are they going to be like 25% instead of a hundred percent capacity? Right. The yeah. stuff, you know, right. um, yeah. yeah, it's a good question. And, um, you know, I mean, as you know, when you play music for a living, you have to learn to be flexible and roll with it and, yeah. you know, do what you have to do to, to make it work. Because at the end of the day, we still want to be able to play the shows and connect with the fans. Mm -hmm. So, um, but it sends like, I, um, like since you guys haven't done it for a while, right? It, it's almost it's almost wrong maybe to approach a venue to say, unfortunately, we need this much because we we we've been off work for you know a year and a half or yeah. something like that, and yeah. then they say, well, we've been out of business for a year and a half. Yeah, uh, you know that's a tricky yeah. situation. Yeah. Stuff like that. It is. Yeah, we've been um, luckily we've been filling in some dates for the summer and the fall. Um, and there are some places that aren't able to book right now and we yeah. get it. Uh, but there are places that are able to book and it doesn't seem like the rates have really gone down that much, luckily for us currently. Um, yeah, I think, the demand I think, is there. Yes. I think people yeah. are really, uh, venues are really eager to return back to normal and they know they have to have good music to do it. And I think people really, really want to go out. I, I know that in two years, once the memory of this has faded, everyone will go back to sitting on their couch and watching TV on Friday and Saturday night <laughs> and say, I'll come see you next time. But mm -hmm. I think, I think in that, you know, by the end of this year, when, you know, people can safely go out uh, and, and the numbers are down and, uh, you know, hopefully a majority of people are vaccinated. I think they're going to, you're going to see an increase in crowds and excitement for people to go out just because they haven't been able to do it. I don't know how long it'll last. I don't know how many venues or bands have been able to survive being out of work for so yeah. long. Yeah, some of the some of our favorite venues have not You almost yes. can charge a little bit more because it's like it's they understand that you know the venue and the artists need the help. So you know eventually it'll go back down. But right now we're charging this. You know what I mean? You yeah. want to come and yeah, yeah. It's there tricky. are some places though. Like we were supposed to go out to California twice last year, and those tours were canceled. And we still did a TV show. Um, in Fresno and um, did it from our basement and they just broadcasted it yeah. virtually because we were supposed to come on their morning show and I had gotten an email from this club in Fresno that wanted to book us after seeing the TV show and they are no longer. Oh, um, really? They had to close. So there are yeah. a lot of spots like that, unfortunately. Um, yeah. The regular folks in D.C. used to go to as well. Yeah, the venue we played in Washington, D.C. has unfortunately had to close their doors. So there are a lot of venues that, you know, no longer exist where we had great relationships with the places and we have to kind of start from scratch in those yeah. markets. So there's definitely going to be a learning curve. Because you, you guys, you play restaurants too. And I was looking and I go... I, I would cut the restaurants in half that ha I mean, you guys knew they had music. Oh, everyone was trying live music. Like every oh, restaurant yeah. Yeah. somehow had live music. Now it's, yeah. it's going to be a lot less, Yeah, yeah. you know, um, you'll have your certain areas and towns like Albany and Saratoga. And I don't know what's in Glens Falls and nothing's in Glens Falls anymore. A little yeah. bit, but yeah. uh, yeah, yeah, it's weird. I don't know. I don't know how to classify all that yet. It's still rolling around my brain of what to do. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But right. It's good to get yeah. info too from like you guys because you're out all the time. It's, <laughs> yeah. you know, will you go out and play or won't you? That's, that's yeah. the question, you know, or do yeah. you have to, you know, yeah. some people I understand uh, whether they want to or not, they have to because that's what they do and, and they have to make yeah. money. And if, if they get it, they get right. it. You know what I mean? Right. 
yeah. and they and they don't necessarily have a successful live streaming thing so they don't have a plan yeah. b like we've been lucky to do yeah. well with the live streams and we have yeah, incredibly generous fans who have helped support us but not everybody has that so we know that we are very lucky here we are definitely very lucky yeah 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 so let me ask one more question i think i know who this is uh chad okay. von d pretty okay. sure okay I said, if you had to pick any major artists to cover your music, who would it be? Oh, I didn't think it would be the same answer for me. You think so? Yeah. Any artist to cover your songs? Paul songs. McCartney. I mean, Paul McCartney to me is <laughs> God. So, yeah, that's what it would be. I would say uh, I would love to hear uh, either Muse or Band of Skulls cover one of our songs. I thought that would be, I think that would be awesome. If, we, if Band of Skulls could cover like a drum, that would be awesome. That would be awesome. I could picture like a punk band too doing something, just like <laughs> Billy Idol or something. Yeah. <laughs> that out. would be cool. Look at yeah. Drew. Yeah. He's got the, you know, the <laughs> Make your own. Money, money. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Well, I appreciate you guys coming on here today. We're in season two of New York State Music in Motion. Everybody out there, thank you very much for watching and supporting here. We came back, hopefully season three here sometime. Maybe have you guys on again, see what's going on cool. here. We would love to, Frank. Any uh, yeah. last uh, last comments, feel free, chime in, whatever you want. May the force be with you. you <laughs> Get your vaccine. Yeah, I would say... Um, Everybody now, especially, I end every live stream saying this, but now especially, please take care of each other. Do the right thing, not only for yourself, but to take care of everyone else. So. Right on. I agree. Yeah. Seriously, everybody, yeah. check out their music, iTunes, Amazon, everywhere. Go to their website. They probably got signed CDs, T-shirts, who knows? Maybe the koozies and coasters and everything else. I know yeah. your merch rack was pretty, went up to the wall. So they got it. They got everything. Help them out, right? Help out everybody. Whoever you like. I, I always say out there, any indie artist that you like, buy their stuff. Don't stream it. Download it, folks. Yes. All right? Thanks, yes. guys, very much. Melanie and Rich, everybody. Hello. Thanks, Frank. <laughs> See you later. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Make sure you like and subscribe to all of our pages, NewYorkStateMusic.com, stream and support.